This just into CBS Sports HQ, a decision on Browns quarterback Deshaun Watson is expected by sometime on Monday. That's according to our Josina Anderson. It's been over four weeks since the hearing before independent arbitrator Sue Robinson to determine potential discipline for Watson, who has been accused by more than two dozen women of sexual misconduct. And for more, let's welcome in CBS Sports NFL insider Josina Anderson. Josina, you were just in camp with the Cleveland Browns. Now this news coming down, as you have reported, what more can you tell us? Yeah, so what I'm hearing is even more specific than the table was set just there, that all relevant parties um, have been notified that Sue Robinson is expected to notify them by sometime Monday presumably whether via leak or just, you know, through some statement or what have you, the media and other parties will find out. But at least the people involved uh, in the situation, uh, most likely, obviously, the hearing and things like that, those people will hear. And sometime after that, obviously, everyone else will know. (laughs) Josina, with a decision coming on Monday, the NFL, what are they pushing for? Are they pushing for a year-long suspension, and how is that weighing into the decision by Sue Robinson? So for what I've heard, nothing has changed relevant to uh, what the NFL has been seeking as far as, um, you know, discipline for Deshaun Watson uh, coming in there, uh, trying to advocate uh, for at least a year, uh, if not indefinitely, for Deshaun Watson. And obviously Deshaun Watson and, and his team arguing that it should be at least going into the hearing. That was uh, my reporting that they were advocating for zero games and how things evolved over the arbitration. Obviously, the expectation is that we'll get more details on that with her uh, decision, which at this time I'm expected to be written. But it'll be very fascinating to figure out what this is, because this is the first time that Sue Robinson has uh, obviously been involved in the case like this um, as a jointly appointed hearing officer from both sides in a high profile uh, proceeding such as this. So, so much of this, especially for the media and all of us covering this, has been, you know, a new process relative to how they uh, came up with this for the new CBA Um, that was done back in 2020. And furthermore, when you consider that the uh, hearing happened prior to uh, July 4th, um, and that per the CBA, the post-hearing briefs were not supposed to be longer than five pages outside of possibly her allowing that, but that's what it does say in the CBA. You know, we would be getting now into the third week, you know, if we didn't hear something past this week. So, It just felt like it was time. I I heard a lot of hope last week that it would be, you know, that they were hoping rather that it would be last week. And then when it didn't come by Friday, as I reported from Berea, Ohio, wasn't expecting it to be Friday simply because of the optics and how much people talk about it looking like, you know, a news dump and things like that relative to how news has come out in the past from the league. So uh, this allows there to be a full week of, you know, talk around the decision. Um, We expect that her decision will obviously very be very deliberate as there's been a lot of time put over this decision and we're all just waiting to hear it is about time yeah yeah speaking of that you've been covering this story since it broke and and look this is a very delicate story a delicate situation when you consider all the women involved the team involved the player involved uh the league getting involved in this in terms of what they would like to see in terms of suspension I'm curious what you think, because you have been reporting on this. You have had uh, the news on this. What do you make of the delay in the decision? Does that give Cleveland hope that he's going to be suspended less? What does that tell you about the delay in this decision? I think when you're looking at the duration of the time that it has taken for Sue Robinson to come up with her decision, I don't really think you can read the tea leaves one way or the other with respect to the time. I mean, obviously, there is a lot of sensitive uh, things that have been discussed. I reported uh, through the duration of the hearing that um, at issue was four women that were before her consideration. Um, The league had interviewed 12 and um, had narrowed that down to five. But one of those women um, uh, were part of that five via just the information coming from um, an article, at least per my reporting. And I know Pro Football Talk also reported that as well. 
So at issue are four, and I think it's really going to come down to, um, you know, the credibility that Sue Robinson places on, um, you know, what is heard from those four interviews via what the league put forth. Um, and obviously, in addition to that, the language in the um, personal conduct policy is very broad as well. And that's uh, intentional, uh, I think, you know, just because it does give, at least in the past, per the way the proceedings were, um, Roger Goodell, a lot of leave way to assess the entire situation from a 360 lens as to how the league should come in. Now, we do know per the changes in the CBA that Roger Goodell potentially would weigh in or his designee at the backside of this if uh, Sue Robinson, in fact, finds that there is a violation. Uh, Roger Goodell in the NFL does possess that final right, but we'll see. And as we've underlined a lot throughout this whole process of waiting, that if she deems that there is no violation, then that is it. And it um, and and and, that, and you wouldn't hear anything else from there. And then from there, um, obviously, if there is a violation and for some reason the union or Deshaun Watson uh, doesn't feel like that is in line with their expectations per what both of, um, you know, the union and his uh, representatives have put forth in the hearing, then they also have the right to appeal that decision. So I think what's best for everybody is just to sit back and wait, not to try to make predictions. This is Sue Robinson's first time, you know, at the desk with a decision of this magnitude. So let's just wait to see what it is. Josina Anderson reporting a decision is expected sometime on Monday. Again, you were in camp with the Cleveland Browns. Deshaun Watson was there working out, practicing. What was the vibe in Berea there amongst the team? Business as usual. I mean, you really couldn't tell um, that a big decision was looming around the organization. Matter of fact, as I mentioned from uh, Berea on Friday, that a source had told me just even behind the scenes that coming into uh, two weeks prior to me being there, that Deshaun w Watson was looking kind of uh, extra light and, you know, uh, extra, you know, engaged and and what have you. So they were noticing, uh, you know, that that focus. And that's just the way it was described to me relative just to his disposition and personality. And obviously, over time, as we would expect, he would be continually, uh, continuously rather getting more assimilated as a leader of that team. So I would say say it was business as usual. Now, tomorrow, <laughs> you know, I'm obviously expecting the organization to, you know, gather themselves and do whatever they feel is necessary for the preparation of this. But I just want to continue to be clear that my reporting is that the relevant parties are the relevant parties are expected to be notified. And presumably sometime thereafter, uh, we will hear however that comes via a leak or whether there's a statement that specifically, obviously, I don't know at this time. Josina Anderson with the very latest here on CBS Sports HQ. Again, a decision on a suspension is expected Monday. Josina, appreciate the information and the conversation mm -hmm. here on HQ. Now, Deshaun Watson has settled 20 of the 24 civil suits accusing him of sexual assault and sexual misconduct. Two Texas grand juries declined to indict him this spring. Watson, 26 years old, spent the first five years of his career with the Houston Texans, sat out the entire 2021 season, and the Browns this spring trading for him three first-round draft picks, a third-round pick, two fourth-rounders, and they signed a fully guaranteed five-year, $230 million contract with the Browns, the largest fully guaranteed contract in NFL history. And now we wait a decision, but we do have news, according to Justina Anderson, a decision on the suspension expected sometime on Monday. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.